Oh, yeah. We have our own little Kokomo, don't we, here in uh, the land of milk and honey, Southern California, Cindy Dole, Home Wizards, and we love talking about giving you that sense of Kokomo, no matter where you live here in the area, uh, to make it just feel like paradise. And uh, glad you're with me this Saturday because you're going to get all kinds of ideas when you hopefully will go to visit the Pasadena Showcase House. We've been talking about it for a number of weeks, and this is kind of the final stretch. It goes until a week from tomorrow. Uh, by the way, if you haven't gotten tickets yet, you can go to PasadenaShowcase.org and buy them, or you can email me and possibly get to go on us. So email me this weekend at cindydole.com. But let's talk about that Kokomo, because here it is in Southern California. We get that outdoor living pretty much year-round. We're kind of spoiled that way. And uh, when you walk through the outdoor areas of the Showcase House, you're going to see this incredible pool that was redone. Um, and then there was a lot of landscaping uh, by that pool, kind of poolscaping, they call it. But then when you have a pool, you have to have an area to change and so much more. And that was the task of David Ream or David Riom with the construction and design. So, David, thanks for being here. Thank you. So clarify, we're pronouncing your name right, right? Yeah, it's actually <laughs> Riom, but uh, my whole family, we grew up as uh, kids in San Marino, and everybody called us Reem, and it's so a little you, bit hard to kind of make the transformation. So but, everyone looks like Zagat Guide or yeah, Zagat. Right. We, we know we're talking right. about. All right, so the bungalow. This is a really pretty space. A lot of people, as they were visiting the showcase house, said, I could live in that bungalow. Right. You know, it's yeah. really got all the tricks in there. But set the stage for us before we even... You know, you even touched a thing. Um, what did it look like before? There was a pool that needed some work, and then what was your area just to the side of the pool? Well, this structure was, it was literally a, like a shed. Really? And it's the kind of thing you... Like that, tools and leftover things? Uh, well, it was actually a changing, it was a, a 1920s uh, changing room for little boy and little girls, and it had that, like, kind of, as kind of, some of us who were older kind of remember when you would see those things in uh, in the old clubs and some of the bigger homes, but it was very outdated. It was you know, all decrepit in terms of everything. And so we just decided that that was not going to work. So we gutted that. Mm. And uh, But I still wanted to keep the whole concept of, you know, having a pool changing area. The kids are down there and they need somewhere to go to the bathroom. They need somewhere to put their clothes on. Someone wants to rinse off. But I also wanted to include, you know, entertainment value in there, you know, adult type uh, living. So that was my whole concept in terms of how we, you know, we ended up with where we are. We've got, you know, a nice little, it's almost like a little a little house. It is, a little yeah. pad, isn't it? Right. I mean, you, when you say entertainment, you have a plasma TV in there? We don't have a plasma TV. That's the one thing that we don't have. But we have, uh, we've got a little kitchenette, which has a freezer for uh, with an ice maker. And we've got a refrigerator. It's one of those drawer, those double uh -huh. drawers. And then we've got a sink and uh, storage. And we've got, you know, glasses, all that kind of stuff, type of storage. And then we have, uh, I split the bathroom. Rather than doing two bathrooms like it had before, we did uh, one bathroom, and so I like everything symmetrical, and I wanted to have the kitchenette right in the center when you walk in, and you can look at it, because it's always, we do really attractive cabinetry. But I put the uh, the toilet and the sink in the uh, right-hand side, and I put the shower on the left-hand side. So I split them up, and then they both have doors on the outside and doors on the inside. So if you're in the pool, you can go around the back and come into either one of those areas. If you were inside having a drink, then you also can use those areas. Um, but it was a really a challenge because there was not a lot of space. This this is a 13 and a half deep by 20 foot wide uh, shed essentially. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, tiny, very, really, very very tiny. But you packed a lot in there. We packed a lot in there. In <laughs> oh this little gosh. bathroom, I had to find. I mean, because of code, you have to have certain dimensions between the front of the toilet and the front of the sink. You know, they face each other, and it wasn't working out. But we finally found this little teeny toilet that hangs off the wall. You know, brand new. Oh, I've seen those. Yes, yeah, this one's brand new. And, um, so really, it's safe space. It's safe space, yeah. And then a little, little teeny sink. And it looks great. And then on the other side, I wanted to do a shower, but I didn't have enough space to actually walk in and out of a shower like with a dam and all that kind of stuff. So I did what I call a closet shower. Mm -hmm. You walk into it. It has metal doors, front and, front and back, and we have a tea cabinet in there, in there. It's tiled floor to ceiling. If you take your towel and your clothes and you put it inside one of the cabinet doors up above in the tea cabinet... You can take a shower in there, and the whole room can get wet. And then we've got a drain on the bottom, and it just drains right down. So, uh, you know, it's wow. really kind of an interesting it's safe space. It's It uh, looks great. It's revolutionary, it sounds like. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and what, tell us more about this wall toilet, because I can see a lot of people's minds going, whoa, yeah. I have a very tiny bathroom. Right. What's it called? What is it? It is, um, you know what, I don't want to uh, say that I believe it's a Toto. 
but okay. I, I could be wrong. But it's it's a brand new, uh, hasn't been out before. The reason why it took us, it actually took, we almost didn't get it in there, uh -huh. but we got it in there like a, a couple days before the show opened. But um, it was designed for that exact purpose. I mean, for trying to, you know, you got a little small space yeah. and, you know, because of code, people, there's things you just cannot sometimes do in a little bathroom. When you're trying to do like a little powder room, sometimes you're doing it in a closet. You know, people will say, oh God, I need a bathroom over here. Can mm -hmm. I use this closet? Mm -hmm. It's very typical. And, and you're like, God, how can you fit all these pieces in there? So, you know, that, that's this is the kind of thing that would, you know, work with something like that. Well, it sounds very European and, and uh, yeah, definitely overseas, It kind of looks like that. Right? It's got the push plate, yeah. right? Yeah. Push plate above it where you, you know, because got the... Because, you know, more of us are dealing with the downsizing and smaller spaces right. and trying to make the most of it. And that sounds like a very cool thing. Right. Um, and the closet shower sounds amazing. Yeah. The design of that was, yeah. I think, really, really uh, creative. Uh, we have an overhead shower head, like a rain head, and then we've got a hand spray. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the homeowners are never going to want to use the regular bathroom. Right. They have to tiptoe down to the pool right. to use this little bungalow. Um, so the idea of the bungalow was to also uh, to kind of honor the history of the home. This is this Paul Williams 1920s historic home. Right. Now, this structure, though, was not built at... And at I that do, time. At that time, and I do not believe it had anything to do with Paul Williams. But you still want it to look like but, it yeah, wasn't that just... was my challenge, yeah. was that, you know, I wanted this to go with the... With this the, is a brick home, an, yeah. an English-looking home. And brick so, home, and this yeah. was just a, a poorly-sided um, structure. So what I did was I tore all the siding off the outside because it just looked horrible. And then I went on the Internet, and I started researching guest house. I mean, that's how you, we do it, yeah. you know. I looked at all these guest houses and finally found some ones that I thought had really creative, you know, designs in terms of the exterior and the siding and stuff. So I came up with this with this cross um, pattern that we put on the front and uh, and on the sides. And then we uh, painted the house, painted the, the structure the same color as the house. And then the crisscrosses, I painted the trim color of the house. So that brought the whole color scheme in. And what is, what is the color scheme exactly? The color scheme is, it's a uh, very taupey, or not taupey, but it's a very, uh, it's like a uh, olive black is the trim. And then it's a... Uh, uh, so very earthy, very isn't beigey it? Yeah. is the color of the stucco. So would you say that that's true? I mean, we were just at the kitchen and bath trend show in Las Vegas last week, and we're hearing more and more that these kind of more neutrally colors are the vibe. Is that what you're finding? I mean, with some pops well, of bright what? color too. But I mean, neutral. I mean, I that's will, my that's, that's your what thing? I love. <laughs> but I mean, every, if you've been, if anybody's seen any of our showcases, they're all very, very kind of uh, classic, huh? You no, know, classic. You know, Timeless. I'm not too crazy on color, and truly crazy on really, you know, striking colors. But I mean, I think that's, I mean, a lot of people, the majority of people are just kind of like that kind of neutral, mm -hmm. you know, it appeals to, to the majority of people. So, Well, I guess it's soothing and it yeah. feels safe. But uh, I think that some, when you mentioned that kind of olivey greenish color, that, that seems new, even though it's earthy. You know yeah. what I mean? That seems like it's kind of edgy, but yet uh, it works. Right. But it's good as a trim color. Yeah. Yeah. And that's on the exterior yeah. of the house. And it gives, I mean, it gives a lot of... Uh, a lot of class. I mean, when you see it, it, it makes it more, you know, striking. Uh huh. So very cool. And this is the, the uh, Dunn Edwards, right? That's Dunn the, Edwards. the paint that they yeah. use for all that. Because I think a lot of us, as we're looking not only um, to the interior things, you're thinking of great exterior colors, and uh, and that's a great thing to think those added pops, whether it's the front door or the trim right. or whatever. Right. A lot of times we will change the the color of the front door because mm -hmm. you know that will do a lot. We'll change the color of the shutters, but um, coming up with with a good color scheme is. Uh, is a talent. So how did you, in this very small space, deal with the whole idea and the possibility of mildew and all of that because oh. people are taking showers, right? Good question. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was one of the things. When I found this structure, it was dry rotted to no end. So I actually went to Home Depot and found these metal French doors and um, they were uh, not what the showcase women wanted at all. I mean, it was just they, they don't like that kind of stuff. It had to be, you know, they like wood. They like all that. Mm. But I was looking at this going, you know what? It doesn't really look that different to the eye. And it's metal. It's maintenance free. It was, you know, pre-painted in, in that kind of white. And uh, so I ended up using those doors all inside the house and outside. And it worked really well for me because the shower then can close the doors and it doesn't matter whether it gets wet. And I thought in the long term for this homeowner... You know, they're not going to have, I mean, an exterior or a, let's say an extracurricular structure like that, you don't really put a lot of attention onto it in terms mm. of maintenance usually. Maybe your house, but not those kind of structures. So I thought, you know, this will be good for him. He won't have to worry about painting those windows. 
they and, and the doors and um, you know it's kind of almost maintenance free and save a buck you know you know what it <laughs> sounds save like one money. Of, it yeah. sounds like one of those areas where you're cutting corners but not that it's a smart yeah. move so yeah. that's I a mean good I don't tip. like to cut corners no 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 but I know but you know what I don't like to cut corners but I looked at these and I thought you know what this will work it's going to save time yeah. saves money hey What's wrong with that? So when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about um, some ideas that you could offer for those of us who are planning to enhance our outdoor space. Sure. Because your eyes are lighting up in pride, I can see, <laughs> uh, with this bungalow. But maybe for those of us who don't necessarily have space for a bungalow, but maybe we do, or just anything to kind of make that outdoor right. you know, Kokomo experience come alive. All right. We're talking with David Riam uh, with the construction and design, and we're learning more about the Pasadena Showcase House. Be sure to email me, okay, for your chance to go on us at cindydole.com, and we'll continue as we talk more about the dream that it comes alive at the Pasadena Showcase House. 888-KFWB980 is the number. I'm Cindy Dole, and this is Home Wizards. I love this song about Pasadena, and we've been talking about it because, well, you, of course, heard about the Pasadena Showcase House, nearly 50 years old, a great, great tradition uh, put on by the ladies who are volunteers, so many of them who give their time, the designers, the architects, the contractors who also volunteer and make it all happen and give us this month-long experience to walk through and really become voyeurs and go, you know what, I want that in my home. I want those plants. I want that pool. I want that lighting. You know, you kind of get your to-do list, your dream list, and then... And then someday, when your budget works, you go, okay, let's do it now. So with us is a guy who's going to give us some tips. He's been working on the bungalow that a lot of people kind of wish that was their pad. <laughs> it's really <laughs> great. It's right off the pool. Uh, David Riom uh, with uh, David Riom Construction uh, and Design. And so uh, it really is a beautiful space. And you made one little point that I wanted to clear up for people. You were saying that the showcase people didn't necessarily like this or that. Uh, there are certain parameters, right? When you're doing these showcase homes, you can't always do everything that you want. You have to do what the homeowner wants, right? What are some well, what's some of most that importantly, about? you got to match, you know, all the existing conditions yeah. that are the the quality pieces, and uh, you do have to. There's some input from the homeowner. You got to give a little bit of uh, of weight to that, but really, the rest of it you can do. You know, do what you want, but there is a whole color. A color plan. Right. A palette color for, the, yeah. the, for the whole team. Like, this is what the whole house is going to yeah. connect to. But if you did something and it was just absolutely awful, they would... They'd tell you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off with your head kind yeah, of a thing. Right. Um, but it's always it always turns out so classy. And uh, this year, and again, it's a 1920s Paul Williams designed home, except the bungalow wasn't part of that early design. But still, you get the sense from the property. How, how large is the property? It's... Huge. It's uh, four and a half acres. Huge. Yeah, it's a big They had horses property. at one time, yeah. right? You know, and it just goes they on and on. They have a barn back there, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and definitely plenty and plenty of spaces for the family to come back and just have their own little private time. But everyone also asks, well, what does the family, the homeowner, what do they get to keep? I guess they get to keep everything that's nailed down, Everything right? that is fixed to the wall. Yeah. Um, things like... Uh, all the furniture. Like the toilet that's on the wall. The they're toilet keep, stays. They're not, you're not yeah. taking that toilet no, away from it's, them. <laughs> it's if you were to move into, let's say, a, a brand new home. Uh -huh. That's how they get it. Um, the things that uh, that don't stay that might be changed out that you that maybe people don't know is light fixtures. If it's a really expensive light fixture, you have to take that out but replace it with something. Mm -hmm. So um, And they can buy things. They can buy things at a discounted price. Yeah, because, which is you know, great. It's much better to leave it there than take right. it back out. So. And when we say they, I mean, it's kind of a... It's a tricky process because these volunteers have to scour the San Gabriel Valley. It's always got to be somewhere adjacent to Pasadena. That's right. just been the legend, right? And it has to be like uh, 15,000 square feet or more. Right. And it has to be the kind of a space where people, 50,000 people who, who are tourists, all of us who want to kind of be looky-loos, can walk through. Right. You know? Right. So those kind of parameters. And it's nice if there's a historic connection, too. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's why I think that's why Pasadena is, is you know, it's been the um, it's the longest running showcase it is. house in the country. Everyone says it's got to be. The, there's so many historical homes here. It's got to be the best one in the country yeah. for sure. And you've been doing it for many many years. I've been doing it for um, you know, fifteen plus years. And so why do you do it? Because you're vol I mean, this is not your day job. You've got a construction company right. to run, and you're volunteering a lot of things. Well, I get about ninety five percent of my business from showcase. Yeah. And uh, so, so it's, it's, it's a, a good great marketing. avenue for me to show people what my 
um, what my talents are, and uh, it's fun for me. I learn a lot about all the new products because that's the that's what the vendors mm-hmm. are out there to do. They want to get their products out there so you know people can see them, and mm-hmm. so the whole process is. Uh, and, and we get to use those things for free. So it's, True. you know, got, you can do some stuff that you normally may not be able to do because of budgets and you could do them there. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, and speaking of budgets, because it's always on time and on budget, not always the case in the real world, but for right. showcase, like the TV shows, I mean, you start around January and you always have to be ready you, by it, May. You got to be done by, yeah. Right? By, the, by uh, April, really. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's actually like, like the last week last in March. Week March. Yeah. Okay. So really, three months is that two months? Two months. It's it's really is about because we don't start till about the middle of January. I mean, how many so, bungalows could you really do in two months with all that construction? That's like unheard not, of. Not a lot of a lot of people. I mean, we because we're full service. I've got a lot of uh, in house, um, you know, work mm. workers. So we're able to really kind of power through that kind of stuff. And to tell you the truth, we didn't get a lot done in the first uh, probably month or five weeks and got most of it done in the last three weeks sure so um but uh yeah it's it's hard if you're if you're got a you know let's say someone that doesn't have all those kind of uh you know subcontractors uh-huh. right in their hand because uh-huh. you can't have someone say hey i'm going to show up on tuesday and they show up the following thursday could you, know? you could you put a price tag on that bungalow to ins- like as people are walking through they go hey i want to save up and get that i should save up this amount of money or i should get a loan for blank you know what i would say it's it's probably Around a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's not cheaper a, than a home. Pe- well, the people right that got a hundred thousand dollars, but when you look at it, and uh, you know, it has to do with a lot of the materials and things sure. like that. I mean, it could have been a a forty thousand or fifty thousand dollar bungalow with the exact same floor plan. Right. You know. So. Okay, that's, that's good to know. And are there some certain city codes if, if people are really thinking about putting in a bungalow in terms of having a, an exterior shower and all these different elements? Are there some some special rules you have to follow. Well, you know what? Every city is different. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, a lot of the cities don't let you have a structure that you can rent out, which, you know, they don't want a kitchen and a bathroom. So you have to get around that. Sometimes you can do a sink and a refrigerator, but not a cooktop. Or you can do a, a shower, but the access has to be from the outside. Mm. You know, things like that. So it depends also the size of your property. But on smaller properties, that's usually the... the, um, the the problem is, is trying to figure out how can I do that with the, the city. They don't want me to do that, so you got to kind of be creative. But if you have one of those college kids who's moving back home, they could be living in that bungalow. That, that's you know that's how I you think. Know, I, I, when I do something, I want it to be completely self sufficient. And I thought that way. I thought you know what, if they had a pull out couch there, that yeah. would be fine for sure. a guest or sure. anybody. So those empty nesters all of a sudden not I'm sure empty anymore. It would anymore. probably be a lot nicer than a lot of people would think as a guest. So. <laughs> all right, well, give us some ideas because it is that time of year. I mean, this is the height of the outdoor living. Experience experience, although we we enjoy it forever, right, throughout the year. Um, what would you suggest that we think of if maybe a bungalow is one of our dreams, or maybe it isn't a full-blown bungalow, but we have an, a patio, maybe it's a pool or it's a hot tub, and we want to have a little side thing where you could either Some shower Some kind of interest or, value or... Yeah. I mean, I'm really into outdoor... Well, I like outdoor kitchens. Okay. And I like um, fireplaces. I think something that's that has a center of attention that people want to go gather around. They want to sit around, and it could be a fire pit. Mm-hmm. Um, but the backdrop, I mean, I like fireplaces because it can be the backdrop. It can have everything in front of it. Um, and we do a lot of outdoor kitchens, uh, trellises that you can put, that you put furniture under. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like I like planters that are also seats. Yeah. You know, that's yeah, kind low, of a low, low planters, budget. Right. That's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you can do that where you have, let's say, a fire pit, and then you've got the, you know, low, uh, you know, planter walls like that, mm-hmm. pony walls. Mm-hmm. So, and in this area with this pool and and bungalow and and uh, poolscape, when you see it at, at Showcase House and the pool, by the way, um, which was done by Pacific Outdoor Living, they have this illusion of a koi pond that appears to be spilling into the pool. Right. And as you walk <laughs> around the deck, you're going to go, "Wait a minute! The koi are going to get into the pool? No, right. no, it's all fine. It's an illusion. There's a trap wall. They're not going to intermingle like that. Not that you couldn't swim with koi, but you wouldn't want them in the chemicals and all that. Right. But um, but there's so much going on, and I think that that. That's an important takeaway is to really think big. Think in, as your outdoor space as just this adventure, right, of travel. Well, I mean, that's a good way to, to look at it. But I think that any space that I that I design, I want every space to be a space that is pulling you to it, that draws you to it. I mean, it's like I, you go to some people's homes and there may be one room that they want to go to. But I like to have everything that I do be something that you want to gravitate to and that you're thinking, God, which room do I want to be in today or which space? Mm-hmm. So, and I think that's what's pull, you know, 
to create that kind of thing, you've got to pull in all those elements that you think you may need there. Mm -hmm. You know, so you whether know it's music cool? or the music school right. lighting. I also think that and lighting, exactly. an outdoor work experience place would be cool. I had a meeting at my home the other day, and I thought, you know what? Let's have the meeting outside by the pool. It was just the right kind of temperature. There was shade, a fresh breeze. Only in California. Why not? <laughs> I mean, but would you ever have that as a possibility? Where I think that's a great know, idea. It could still become a functioning workspace, so you don't distract it too much. But yeah. You just gave me a good idea. I mean, I'll have to work on that one. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I mean, you know, why not? Give me have a couple of weeks and we'll come back and we'll do that. Think one. of all the creativity, right? right? What is your website so people can learn more about what you got it's, going on? Uh, it's www.reomconstruction.com. And how do you spell that? R E A U M E. <laughs> okay. And construction. And all the before and afters yeah. for showcase and, and all the previous showcases and Fun all our stuff. jobs. And a lot, of, a lot of creative pictures in there that. Um, we'll give people ideas. Okay. Well, and you're going to send me some pictures we'll put on our website, too, because it's it really is fun to see all those before and after. So, all right. Make sure the email me, you guys, to go to the Pasadena Showcase House, cindydole.com. You may be the lucky one. And if you want to buy tickets, to go to pasadenashowcase.org. Thank you, David Riom. All right. As we segue into Hour 2, and we say a special hello to all you moms out there, we're going to have some more fun in Hour 2. We're going to talk about um, this beautiful stream crossing and how you can bring water features to your yard garden to your home and also that space that little breakfast nook and cranny area how wow, they did it the showcase house cindy dole home wizards let's kick it up hour two coming your way right after this